I can't wait for Monday morning, even after 28 years, seeing the miracles that happen with each and every adjustment coming in. I just can't imagine doing anything else. You know, helping people live an extraordinary life helps me live an extraordinary life. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Dr. Ron Overseen, president of Life Chiropractic College West. And uh, I'm bringing, coming to you with another Life West leadership line. Today, I have a gentleman that I've known, I don't know how long, Joe, but many 30 plus, years, 30 uh, plus, 30 plus years. Um, phenomenal chiropractor, not just a phenomenal chiropractor, but a phenomenal man who has really mastered the word balance, not in his, just in his life, in his practice, with his family. I mean, this guy's got the whole, you know, he's got the whole shebang going on. And uh, I've got Dr. Joel Kinch coming from Castle Rock, Colorado. Welcome, hey, Joel. Welcome, yeah. to the, welcome to the leadership line, brother. Yeah, hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to tell the audience a little about you. Joel uh, graduated 28 years in practice, so graduated in 95 um, from, uh, from uh, Palmer West at that time. Uh, right out of school, went up to Washington State and worked for a very dear friend of both of ours, Dr. Brian Wilmofsky. He set up a clinic for Brian, a satellite clinic in a little town called Centralia. Got that going. They ended up selling it uh, to a really wonderful gentleman, uh, Rich uh, Rich Roth, was it? Yes. Yep, Rich Roth. And, um, and then Joel moved back down to California and right in the San Jose area, Los Gatos, a beautiful place. And he um, had set up a practice there, his own practice there. And that was in 96. And then he ended up being there for five years, met his wife, um, who was a student at Palmer West. And they got married. They kind of decided it's time to move because uh, they really wanted to kind of see where the balance was that they wanted to raise a family. They decided it wasn't going to be in the Bay Area. And that's how they got to Castle Rock. And you what? You've been there 21 years now? Yes, 21. In Castle Rock. And he's just doing amazing things there. He's done amazing things in the profession. You'll learn more about him. A few things I do want to share about him. Joel has, has been into the science, the art, and the philosophy for many years. I'm All three of them, I'm very heavy levels, not just a little bit here, a little bit here, and more here. I'm in a very well-balanced three-legged stool. He was in the very first class of the Legion of Chiropractic uh, uh, Philosophers that came out of Palmer, that Fred Barge actually worked with. And Joel, I think we talked about this. I taught one of your weekends. And I yep. remember you and Rob Sanat and a few of the hustle bus and some other people that were in that class. It was a really amazing class. And Fred orchestrated that whole thing, right? I think it was mm -hmm. under Guy Reekman, but he orchestrated that. And it was just an amazing thing. And Joel, he puts his mind to something, he gets it done. So just really cool stuff in practice. It has a big family practice, but it has a lot of athletes. I was taking care of professional sports teams, and 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 we'll, we might get into that today. We'll see. There's a lot to go through, but just to have an introduction of Dr. Joel Kinch. Joel, let's jump in, man. Let's 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 start yeah, let's some uh, talking about what's going on. You know, I, I think the question, the first question I have for you, maybe we can kind of roll it off. You know, 28 years in practice. You know, three different practices moved around and, 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 you know, finally settled in Castle Rock when Castle Rock was nothing back then, you know, you know, 20 something years ago. Um, what keeps you going every morning, brother? Like what, what is it that drives you? Monday morning. Uh, I, I can't wait for Monday morning, even after 28 years, uh, building the family practice that we have kids, parents running around, uh, seeing, I, I hate the word, but seeing the miracles that happen with each and every adjustment coming in, uh, I just can't imagine doing anything else. It, you know, helping people live an extraordinary life helps me live an extraordinary life. And that just fuels the fire each and every week. Yeah. Well, you know, one of the things that I know about you and I want to, I've never really asked you, is that, you know, how did you transform the business of chiropractic into the life of chiropractic? Because that's what I'm hearing you say, right? And so yeah. how did that metamorphosis take place? Well, with Kathy being a chiropractor, we were kind of thrown right into it. That's all we we knew how to do. So we we jumped in full force a chiropractic. Um, but then again, moving out to Colorado, we wanted some of that balance where uh, when you when you come out here, you know, you've been out here many times. You see the mountains and the world and and then you start having kids and a family. Uh, you just have to start walking the walk with everything that you do and talking in the practice. You start to do it in your family. 
And next thing you know, it's raising kids. It's uh, being a husband. It's being a father. It's being a friend. Doing all those things and bringing that lifestyle, not only what you're teaching in the practice, but outside, that balance is crucial. And that's how you just keep it going. You just live your life. Yeah. Yeah. But but it's it's an art. You know, let's face yeah. it, you know, to to be able to because the outside world's still there. You know, you have the, to negative, work at it. the negative pressures are still coming in. COVID came in, you know, yeah. all these things that kind of want to throw us off our balance. But I think we could shift it to say, how do I get more in balance? How do I use it? It's just our mindset, you know, but you've done a very good job of it, you know, and, and what are some of the trip, some of the tips that you do or things that you've done to create that to happen? Uh, well, one, the science, art and philosophy. So what went like, let's take the COVID experiment that went on. Um, uh, it would be easy to feel like you're on an island in a situation like that, especially when they, in, if you're in a state that started shutting you down and everything like that. But if you're strong in that science, art, and philosophy and know that what you do is right and truth and can truly help people, especially in a time like that, that's when they needed chiropractic even more. So to, how do you do it? You just dive in, you get back to your roots and your philosophy and your, 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 your three stool stand, because that's what got you here. That's what's going to get you through it. It's what's going to get humanity through it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. What are you doing now? Like, 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 you know, 28 years in practice, obviously you just can't like open up the, the can of, you know, science, philosophy and art and just let it sit there because it's either going to spoil, get kicked over, spilled out, whatever. What do you do? Like on a, whether it's a monthly, daily, you know, every six month basis to keep yourself rooted and grounded so that, you know, your soil is being replenished. Yeah. First and, first and foremost is the daily routine. And you hear everybody talk about that. And the importance of the daily routine is getting up and, and hitting, hitting your, uh, your your spiritual moment, hitting hitting your physical moment, hitting your mental moment before you start your day. That, in a nutshell, right there keeps you on the day to day. But you also have to get plugged into your community, not only with your your the the people of the community, but get to get plugged in with the other chiropractors because you can really stay on an island and it gets really lonely on an island. So getting plugged in with your community and your chiropractors, and then the profession as well. Um, you know, I, I went through that phase of, like, oh, I've been to that seminar. I've been to that conference or I've, I've been to that group of people. Why do I need to go back to that? Well, you have to go back to that to realize you're not on the island. You're on a big ship leading leading a, a change in humanity with chiropractic. Yeah. But, you know, the other thing around that, I love that you brought that up. I've been there. I've been there. I've been there. Right. And so yeah. what we're looking at is me being the same instead of how can I go there and take away something so that I can be different than when I walked in. Right. And that's all that. And that's what growth is. Right. We should yes. look different today than we looked a year ago. I'm not talking physically, but I'm talking internally, you know, mentally, you know, socially, uh, spiritually, you know, we should always be growing in those areas there, you know, and, and you're right. Cause it's like, it's so easy to say, been there, done that. Yeah. And then they end up going back four years later and they go, man, I should have been here for the last Absolutely. three years. It's always the same. It's like, a, it's like a chiropractic office, right? Someone stops care and they come back yeah. three years later and go, why did I ever stop? You know? Yep. And even in practice, if you're doing the same thing over and over again, it, 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 it it's no fun, first of all, and you can probably do it in your sleep, but you, you have to change up how you talk to people. People have changed. Cultures have changed. Generations have changed. Uh, you have to constantly be changing and adapting in your practice. Now, you're still analyzing and checking for vertebral subluxation and, and delivering the adjustments. But you've got to have fun with how you're presenting that. You've got to be have fun with how you're conversing about that. You've got to have fun with your environment and always changing up that environment. You see it every day. You got to change that up. New people come in all the time and they go, oh, this is new to them. You've got to make it new to you, too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think that's so important no matter how many years you're in practice. In fact, it's even more important when you go over 20 years in practice, right? It's even more important to do that all the time and constantly. Otherwise, you just get stale and people wonder, well, why is my practice not fun or not growing? Not that it has to grow at that point. Mm -hmm. But it's like, what have you done? It's like, don't look on the outside. It's always, you know, chiropractic is always about what's going on on the inside, right? And be able to yeah, absolutely. You know, make those changes. You know, I, I want to go back to something. So you talked about Kathy. I'm going to put you on the spot for a second. Yeah. You talked about Kathy. And um, I, I, I was actually honored to be at when you proposed to Kathy, right? And you, I think- you married, I, you, you married us too. <laughs> did I? <laughs> yes. I know I did. I know I did. But but I want to talk about the proposal because what I did at the wedding was nothing compared to what you did at the proposal. And just share with our audience, because you know what? 
I think it talks about this. I think it talks about that, that there's ways of doing things and there's no right way. There's no mm-hmm. one way like you just talked about, you know, but just doing something and, and moving forward. And I thought yours was truly one of the most unique proposals on the spot, correct? Correct. Not planned that I've ever seen. Share, share it with her. Do you remember? Because I oh, yeah. had no alcohol in my body because I don't oh, drink yeah. alcohol. You had some in your body. So do you remember it like perfectly? I remember I remember every second of it. So we were at one of your power source success programs. It was the end of year planning of the next year. And at the end of that, you always had a black tie ball. And and Kathy and I were dating and we were there. And I went to the back with a group of friends. And I, I think Brian might have been involved in that, but there was all the usual characters of the power 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 zone then. And we were back and we were we were having some hors d'oeuvres and a cocktail. And I think it might have been. Eric Gnarl. Do you know Eric Gnarl? I think he was there. And he asked me, he goes, is is Kathy the one? And I said, yeah. And they go, all of them kind of said, well, what are you waiting for? And I said, I'm not, let's go. So we went up to the stage, cleared the stage, went to the DJ, and this is corny. We had them play that law. You've lost that love and feeling. Tom Cruise from, it was, it was from. uh, Top Top Gun. Top Gun. Exactly. So we all believe we all tried to sing that to the best of our ability, this this gang of guys. And I called Kathy up the stage and I, I got down on her knee and asked her to marry me right then and there. Yeah. I'm telling you, man, it was so cool. And, and you might not remember, you came to me and said, hey, I want to propose to Kathy. Can I go take over the stage and get the DJ? And I said, oh, absolutely. And then and you guys went, you know, and it was just amazing because, you know, just picture I think there was like seven of you or eight of you up on the yeah. stage and it was almost like out of a top, almost out of a Top Gun scene, like in the bar, you know, when Goose was doing his thing. And here you are. And Kathy was like, what the Petrified. heck is going on here? Yeah, she was. And you called her up on stage and, you know, had she graduated yet or was she still a student? She had not graduated yet. Yeah. And here she comes up on stage and man, you just got down on one knee after singing that to her. It was classic if i had a video of it man i would be playing it all over youtube but you know what it shared with me it shared with me that that someone just said something to you and you just moved on it like that your innate spoke and you just said you know what i don't have to think about this and and how many years later you're still married have a great relationship have everything else a beautiful family you know two kids who are just doing phenomenal james and she's a high school senior but has a scholarship to go play soccer or something Yep, yep, yep. And then you know, Kenobi uh is uh is in is in what 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 service is he in? He he's at the United States Merchant Marine Academy. He got his appointment there. Yeah, yeah. And 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 you know, here he is traveling around the world and doing stuff and just doing amazing things. And it's like, you know, it doesn't it just you gotta just listen to what's here, you know. Yep. And Joel, that's that was what I took out of it, you know, yep. that whole evening. That's what I took out of it. It was like it wasn't a, a drunk moment, it was a moment of yeah, what is stop? You know, it's a, it's just right. And so when we talk about that, we talk about chiropractic, we talk about being balanced, we talk about all this different stuff, you know. I think something that people always look at, you know, and like you're, you know, you're 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 in your 28th year, you know. Um, you know, I'm in my 43rd year. I I you know, there's a word that comes up at some point about that people always say to you, when are you going to retire? Right? You know, yeah, and I, I know you have a different perspective on the word retirement. Share with us what that. Well, what that is. I, I tell people I retire all the time, and what I mean by that is I, I change the word. I think about about a car. Every now and then, you've got to retire. You've got to re- reset the treads of what you're doing in your practice, what you're doing in your personal life, what you're doing with your hobbies, what you're doing with your friendships. You've got to sit down, and especially when you get into that moment where you feel stagnant. It's time to really take a good look at things and retire. Okay, let's change some things. Let's make this car hum again. Let's make the practice hum again. Let's make this relationship hum again. And I retire all the time. I have no problem with that. Now, traditionally, do I plan on retirement? I don't even think about that because I'm having so much fun with what I'm doing. Maybe it'll come, maybe it won't. But every day I like to think I'm retiring on how I can communicate this better, how I can adjust better, how can I analyze better, how can I get a better grasp of my philosophy so I'm stronger in my practice. I consider that retiring every day. 
Yeah. Yeah. I love that. It's such a beautiful, you know, cause what is it you retire and where do you do you go to the garden? I mean, like, yeah. like, like, what do you do? And when you're in love with this thing called chiropractic, which is really when you're in love with, with life, right. When you're in love with allowing people and yourself to see the best expression of who you can be, where does, where do you stop? I mean, it, it just yeah. doesn't stop, you know, it, but it could take different phases of what it looks like. Yeah. You know, and I think that's the huge thing. You know, um, I, I'm also impressed because you've done a lot of work with giving back. And I know that's always been a passion of yours to give back to the profession. Right. And give back to humanity, really, because when we talk about the profession, we're not talking about chiropractic. We're talking about how do we give to this vehicle called chiropractic to create a better a better world. Right. Um, yeah. Talk about that. Like, you know, how'd you get into giving and 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 and, and what's your thoughts on that? It can, it can be small or big. And that's where I, people think I, they, they can get kind of trapped or frozen on what they can do for this profession. Whereas, you know, they, they can see people that are doing what's perceived as these huge things of writing books and becoming bestsellers and, and putting all these uh, uh, programs together. But you can make it simple by getting out there and, and give back to the profession. Like uh, just last Tuesday, I spoke to Sierra, Sierra Nevada Corporation. There's it, it was 20 miles away. No one from that talk is going to be coming into my office. But those 40 people there, I referred out to 20, 27 of them to four different chiropractors that I looked out to in that area. Yeah. So just giving back simply that way can do it. You can do it simply by anonymously giving money to a charity in your local town. Yeah. Now, it'll eventually come back. Maybe that person will mention chiropractic simple like that. Or it can be on a big adventure like a. Dr. Danny Knowles and I 10 years ago said, hey, Colorado is not together. Colorado isn't on an island. They're always attacking us with prescriptions and different things like that. And Danny said, hey, let's let's start a conference so we can get these guys together and, and make it a home where, where principled chiropractors can come and feel home, regardless of school, regardless of technique, regardless of the, the, the different tents that are out there. Let's build a tent that once a year people can come to. So it can be as little as as a local talk to a MOPS group for chiropractic, or it can be something big like that, setting up for its profession-wide, worldwide. Yeah, yeah. And also just getting involved in your state association, right? I mean, yeah. that's that's super important. Oh. I mean, there's there's no one who's who's protecting, you know, the area more yeah. than your state association, right? And yeah, to go back to what you had said of, oh, I've been to that convention, right? then just give money, yeah. give money for politics, give money there. That's the way to do it to the, the state association. Every chiropractor in every state should be contributing to the state organization, Yeah. period. Yeah. Regardless yeah. of what you think about it going, the money's going to be there to protect you. And it, they help you, they help a profession being re, uh, proactive rather than reactive. We're yeah. always on defense in this profession. And one way of doing that is giving that to your state association. So uh, they have their nose to the ground. They know what's coming on. The vibration's way ahead of what's going on. And just by supporting them, even if it's 50, one adjustment a month, you know, 50, 60 bucks a month helps yeah. get yeah. involved. Yeah, I'll tell you something, and it's, and it's so true that that people think like, oh, my God, if I if I get involved with my state association, it's going to take my time. It's going to take all this. And the truth is, if everybody got involved, they they, they couldn't give of their time. We'd have too many people. Yeah. But really what the associations are looking for is give us some treasure that you have so that we can then take that and lobby and do all the things that we need to do on Capitol Hill, you know, whatever country, whatever state that's at and be able to make things happen. So I agree with you 100% because if we don't give back, it's the same thing to the colleges. And I'm not saying this because I'm a chiropractic yeah. college president, but you know, our colleges are nonprofit colleges and we're not being funded by the NIH. We're not being funded by the government, you know, on certain levels. We're not state colleges that get state money that gets poured into them. It doesn't matter how many people go to them. You know, we're these separate little businesses. And when we're these separate little businesses, any money that comes in to be able to help our students and help, you know, facilitate what we want to do with our message, right? As long as it's in alignment with who you are, you know, um, you know, pick a school that's in alignment with you, then boom, you know, that's that's really what it's about. And people don't even understand the president circle, for instance, you know, hundred dollars a month minimum. I got people doing five thousand a year, ten thousand a year, but a hundred dollars a month, there's a big impact with that. 
Yeah. And you know, and it's two bucks, it's two two adjustments, probably less than two adjustments now these days, you know, but it is. And I think giving back is so important. You've done a phenomenal job of that. You've also kept a good balance with it, you know. Um so I, I circle with that, Ron, of if if that's not a case, being out in the states where you are, you open up your office for uh, a su- a student discovery night. Uh, uh open up your office for interns who are traveling around have an open door policy for students so they can come in and show that it works. It, you're, you're happy, you're successful, you're profitable, you're living the extraordinary life that they made the right choice in chiropractic, that they made the right choice. And it can be simple as I know your, your, your school does that as well as say, Hey, we got 20 kids in that area are looking for chiro- uh, looking to potentially become a chiropractor. Can we host a night at your office? Yeah. Absolutely. You can. Yeah, yeah, and, and 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 it's so interesting. We were just in San Diego uh, just this past weekend, and we had a, a a presidential reception kind of deal dinner that we do, and we had about fifty people there, right? Because San Diego is my hometown, and and uh, we had to find a restaurant to be able to hold that. We could probably, probably could have had a hundred. I just can't get a restaurant that big to hold it, and. Um, and it was really interesting because that's what we talked about. You know, we talked about that it's so easy. It's even in your practice. You know, someone was there. He said, oh, my God, he's the, the, not me, but this other person's a reason I'm a chiropractor. You mentioned to me at one point, you know, as a patient. And it's just kind of like all we have to do is just say to somebody, because we know the people in our practice who aren't necessarily happy with their life or their job. They're happy with their life, not their job. And they don't even know there's even an alternative. And just be able to say, hey, you ever thought about being a chiropractor? And then poof, it's like, no, I haven't. But tell me about it. And the next thing you know, I got 60-year-old men and women, 65-year-old men and women at the college coming for a second profession, 50s, 40s. I mean, it's what it's about because it's the kind of profession that we have, right? Anyone can go out and do it. You got these. That's it. Got these, got this, and you got a big heart, right? It's really hand, heart, and, you know, it's really what it is. Joel, I'm, I'm, I am... First of all, I'm just so excited to talk to you. And uh, you know, we talked about at the beginning that you took care of athletes. Just share kind of like your journey with with the athletes. I know you took care of some professional. What what what, what team did you take care of? Well, part of my journey in chiropractic was I, I ended up with Maximize Living for a, a series of years in my career. And uh, with those connections, we were able, being so close to Colorado Springs, we were able to uh, have access to uh, several of the Olympic athletes there. Uh, teams that like judo, wrestling. Uh, 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 I, I don't. I don't want to say any, but the, the wheelchair assisted like volleyball, different things like which was phenomenal. I love working with those people because they they did they'll do anything to get you know their life back in their hands. So chiropractor was awesome for that. Uh, a local chiropractors here in town. We we banded together and we became the chiropractors for the Colorado Rapids. Uh, it helped them. Their their only MLS championship was when we were their chiropractors. <laughs> I'm, I'm chalking that up for chiropractic. Um, involved in the MMA community. I don't know, a lot of people don't know MMA basically started, the fight started in the Denver area. So it takes oh, care of a lot of the MMA fighters in the area. Uh, and it it's just snowballed. It's not like you you market that or anything. It's, it's when people hear about chiropractic and what you're doing in your office and about lifestyle and, and making things extraordinary, you just attract people like that, yeah. especially high level athletes. Cause they're not, com- they're not coming for their back pain. Right. They're coming for another 1% of function because that 1% might take them to the Olympics or that 1% might uh, keep them on the field when someone else might crumble. They're all about function. And that's, what's beautiful about working with athletes. Yeah. Yeah. All about potential, right? Maximizing what they have. I mean, it's crazy. And, 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 and if people can see that role chiropractic has, I know that our viewers can, because, you know, just one clearing of the nervous system is going to increase the vibrational pattern within them, which is going to then, you know, create more flowing from the brain down to the tissue cell that you have to function better. You just have to, um, I love it. Joel, thank you, man. I, I, I'm so Welcome. so glad to have you on the, the leadership line. It's so good to see you. And uh I promise we'll get together the next time I'm out in I'm out in Denver if you're not if you're not fly fishing somewhere around the world or wherever you may be, right? <laughs> kind of thing. Um and I will tell you I thought about you. Mary and I are gonna be lecturing in Ireland coming up in May, and I was oh. And I was reflecting on a time that Joel, myself, and two other uh, gentlemen, uh, Scott Moon and, and another gentleman, Scott's a chiropractor, we all took our fathers, and so eight of us, and we went and did a golf trip through Ireland, and it was just incredible. Uh, that was before cell phones, I think. They had satellite phones, but it was fun. Hey, 
I've had a great time. I could go on and on, but we've got to kind of end it uh, to our viewers. You know, I think Joel just dropped a lot of big bombs of wisdom. I mean, first of all, about balance. Second of all, about the science, philosophy, and art. Constantly playing it and bringing it into your life so that you can actually take this thing and live it. Because you know what? It it, it meshes with any spiritual avenue or religious avenue that you're on. It is it is just really incredible. And um, Joel, thank you for living it. And to our viewers, thank you for being with us. Share this message. Listen, this message, I know there's someone in your town, there's someone, a buddy of yours or a gal friend of yours who, you know, chiropractor who needs to hear this or not a chiropractor needs to hear this and just to kind of maybe get that spark going. Like, ah, yeah, I'm done. Boom, just get that spark going because that spark goes a long way and we call it the spark of life, the spark of innate intelligence. Um, So thank you. Share it. And uh, re-listen to this because I think you'll get a lot more out of it. I know I will the second time I listen to it. And I also want to just thank you for being part of our our community. Thanks for coming on to the Life of West Leadership Lines. We drop these every other week, the opposite week. My wife and I do a Life by Life West. Um, You're more... Come to all of them, listen to all of them. These are now podcasts. So you'll be seeing on somewhere in the notes or wherever it might be how to reach into the podcast. So you can listen to this as you're driving or wherever you are. And just know that we're doing this because we want to keep more information coming out to our chiropractic brothers and sisters and their patients and anyone you want to share it with and spouses and, and significant others. So know that we love you know that we care about you, know that we think that you are doing a phenomenal job as we go to create a brighter future for humanity. And until the next time I come at you, Joe Kinch and myself will bid you adieu and keep loving those around you, hugging those people that need the hugs. And uh, and we'll see you the next time you're back at the Life West Leadership Line. See you later. Mm-hmm.